Suffering is a temptation to seek for ease at all cost. Uh -huh. See, if you're, not, if you're not anchored, your suffering will become the main thing. But it's, all you can think about is getting rid of the suffering, whatever it is that mm -hmm. making you suffering. I want to be comfortable. And then ease and comfort, you, you'll, you'll trade anything to be, to be at ease again. Uh -huh. If, you, if, you're, if you're moved by what suffers, yeah. by what you're suffering. If you're anchored while you suffer, then your suffering will pass over and leave you where you were. Amen. Here's another temptation, discouragement. Have you thought about discouragement as being a temptation? Amen. Discouragement will tempt you to despair, to think it's not worth it. Throw in the towel before you reach the finish line. Discouragement can make you think that God isn't looking, God isn't hearing, God isn't seeing. God isn't working. Discouragement can it, it can it can beat you down where you just throw you and throw in the towel. But if you're anchored, your discouragement will pass. See, and you'll you'll hope again. David knew it. Yet will I praise him for the health of his countenance. Somebody uh, said very uh, very picturesque way that a valley is it's just one point between two mountains. That's that's like discouragement. You had to go down into discouragement, and you're going to come out of it too. Yeah, that's true. But discouragement is a temptation. Success is a temptation. Mm -hmm. Success will tempt you to be proud. Look at what I is like, like Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. Look at this kingdom that I've created. Look at this church that I've created. Look at the campus. Mm -hmm. Barb and I just saw the other day a sign on the church that they're advertising their north campus. I thought, sounds like Nebuchadnezzar to me. Look at this great campus that I've created in my, by my great power. Su success will, will uh, tempt you to glory in man and to not glory in God. Extra time is a temptation. Isn't it? Spare time. Some people ruin themselves in spare time. I, I remember, I don't remember who it was, but I remember from a little child that these, these old guys think that being busy is good. These old guys think it's bad that I don't have much to do. Well, now that I'm an old guy, I know what they meant. There's a little cliche says idle hands is a devil workshop. That's not, that's not just like a nursery rhyme. There's actually some truth to that. Extra time will tempt you to waste to waste your resources, waste your resources of time, waste your energies of thought, to waste what the Lord, extra time is, is, is a gift to invest, to invest in, in eternal things, to give your, it's a temptation to give yourself to lesser things. Yeah. Entertainment and pleasure is a temptation to, to, to disengage from reality. Entertainment is a temptation to be idle. See, some of these things are, are not thought of as temptations. Success? Some people would call me a liar for saying that success is a temptation. But temptation can come in many different forms, but they're all designed in some way. They're all designed to move you from the hope of the gospel. <clears throat> so if you're, if you're anchored, you can suffer. If you're anchored, you can, you can be discouraged. If you're anchored, you can, you can have success and it not ruin you. If you're anchored, you can have extra time and, and, and invest it well and be, be productive with extra time. The, enemy, the enemy of our soul has a deep arsenal of weapons, and he's frankly not concerned with what he has to use in order to move you. From base sins that are obviously evil to hidden things that no one else can see, Satan's willing to use any and all of these weapons in order to move you. He disguises himself as an angel of light so that he hides his intentions. Satan doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't show up with, uh, with a full disclosure of his methods and his ways and his intentions and his motives. He doesn't disclose, he disguises. He masquerades. One version says he masquerades as an angel of light. He conceals his objectives and he works subtly. He's willing to, quite willing, quite content to move you just a little bit at the beginning. That's right. He's quite willing to settle for moving you with just one thought. 
He is quite willing to take the smallest of opportunity and move a person just the smallest amount if that's all he can get. If that's all he can do at the time, he's quite willing. But we need an anchor Amen. to not be moved. Mm -hmm. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. Mm -hmm. Without an anchor, we are unguarded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, it's not, it's not just a matter of, the, of a direct attack from the wicked one. Mm -hmm. It's also a matter of, of just, the, just the passing of time and just the, just the regularities of life. Just like the, the, think of the Grand Canyon or any other uh, uh, body of water, body of, of running, moving water that can cut and can erode. And, and what, a, what a canyon yeah. that the water has created in, in the West that we call the Grand Canyon. Just over time, slowly, we need an anchor. <clears throat> Without it, we will be taken captive by him at his will. That's a word writ written to Timothy that Satan can actually take people captive at his will. What about free will then? What about man's free will? If we can be taken captive by him at, at his will, without, without an anchor, a ship is not only carried away by the wind, but is also broken up by the waves. So as, as, a, as, the, as a storm takes away a ship, it's not only moving it, it's also destroying it. The waves beating against the ship <clears throat> will destroy the ship, not just move it. So as we see, as we, if trouble and trial and suffering and discouragement, if it drags us away from the Lord, it doesn't, it doesn't leave us in the same condition, just over in a different place. It takes us away and damages us. With no anchor, we will be tossed to and fro with every wind and wave of doctrine. With no anchor, we will faint along the way. With no anchor, we will be as those in Israel who wanted to go back to Egypt. With no, with no anchor, we'll look back at, back at Egypt and think, it was, it, was, it was better than leeks and onions. I'm going to go back to Egypt. The, the, the people thought that way because they were not anchored. They were moved. God put them in the wilderness they had everything they needed in the wilderness. There wasn't any reason to go back to Egypt. God put them in the wilderness, and they wanted to go back where they were in bondage because they weren't anchored. They weren't anchored where they were at. But those who endure unto the end, as Jesus says, they endured because they were anchored. The house that was still standing after the wind and the waves beat on that house, it stood because it was anchored. Those who will be able to open unto him immediately and be ready to enter in to the wedding feast at that day, they'll be ready to enter in because they were anchored. Hallelujah. During the time of their waiting, they were anchored. Mm -hmm. The ones who ran out of oil, they, they drifted mm -hmm. because they weren't anchored. Amen. Now, hope is an anchor of the soul. Amen. I, I, I'm glad for how he said this. Yeah. It's not an anchor of the spirit. Now, I'm not making something out of nothing here. I want you to hear me out. It's not, it's not an anchor of the body. It's not, it's not an anchor of your dreams. It's not an anchor of your family. Hope is not an anchor of your family. In fact, Jesus said he, in some cases he divides a family. It's not an anchor of your finances. See, religion today is being presented as this, this, is, this is what you need to stabilize your family and your finances. You may break it up, too. That's right. It's not an anchor of your career. Mm -hmm. It's an anchor of your soul. Mm -hmm. Now, if your soul is anchored, your career will be affected. That's right. It'll be sanctified. Amen. What, what, a, what a wonderful liberty that you can work unto the Lord. Yeah. What if you couldn't make cabinets unto the Lord? What if you couldn't work on airplanes as unto the Lord? 